What's going on? What's good? I'm back. Yours truly, one and only Paul Pigger, host of the Paul Pigger Podcast, aka Triple P, aka the Common Sense Podcast. Your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. Today, I'm going to react to a video uh, about people hating on the Richmond, North of Richmond song going number one, the Oliver Anthony song. Before we do that, though, I want to give you a word from DizzleBrand.com. That lit, that slap. It is that one, that A, everybody talking about this on new drink. They like, that's that turn, that lit, that slap. It is that one, that A, everybody talking about this on new drink. They like, they like, you can dizzle too. Dizzle is a premium luxury liqueur mixed with agave, tequila, cognac, and orange liquor mango mix. Just throw your dizzle on ice, and it's nice. If you want to order your very own bottle, or bottles of Dizzle Premium Luxury Decor, go to DizzleBrand.com, click on the Order Online button on the home page, and that will take you to Emilio's Beverage. Must be 21 and over. Shipping and handling is included. Also, if you're located in California, Oklahoma, Kansas, or Arkansas, click on our locations under DizzleBrand.com. That'll show you actual store locations. Don't forget the Dizzle Brand merch. I got the Dizzle Dodger shirt on, as I like to call it. Um, straight the Dodgers colors, the white and the blue. Definitely love this this shirt. Go to dizzlebrand.com, click on merchandise store, or go to etsy.com. That's e t s y dot com. Search for Dizzle Brand. Go to etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash Dizzle Brand. Also, the Dizzle Brand gummies are available online as well at dizzlenova.com. I repeat, Dizzle Brand gummies are available at dizzlenova.com. Link will be in the description. All right, let's get into it. Come here, Fetty Ass. Mr. United States government, put it out of the way. Y'all really out here trying our patience. Yeah, I want the independent, the Republican Party, and the Democratic Party. Scoot your ass to the front. I got your ass by the neck right now. Do you understand me? Because I want y'all to know that we ain't playing no games. Since y'all don't want to fix this shit, and you keep seeing all of my damn TikToks going viral. So I know y'all sees my shit. This thing is getting heavy. Let me Oh, let me chime in for a second. One person's TikToks going viral. Is it going to change the world? Let's keep it moving. Put y'all down real quick and get up in y'all face. Now listen to me. Let me tell you something. Okay, I know y'all see all of my TikToks. Getting all types of all these views and likes and shares and all. I know y'all see me going viral. So y'all know we talking to y'all. She's feeling herself right now. You know how many people are going viral on TikTok every day? Like, and that's the thing. What, what does she consider... She might consider 1 million views on TikTok as going viral. Some people might consider 5, 10 million, you know. What is the standards of going viral? Y'all see the people in the comment section in agreement, all these duets, likes, and comments to share, and y'all still like a do about this mother She's talking about probably hundreds of people. So hundreds of people agreeing with her is supposed to validate Everything that comes out of her mouth, no, you need millions of people agreeing with you. Talk to me. All right, I tell you what, then. We fixing to go on strike starting September 1st. Ain't nobody fixing to go to damn work. Don't nobody show up to damn work. They can't find everybody. Stop paying these damn bills. We can't afford to pay them all anyways. Why the we paying them? I think Why are we paying them? Because... I you try to stop paying your bills all you want shit and they, they're not going to cut that shit off they're gonna, they, they're not going to cut off your lights cut off your water cut off your gas if you got gas you, yeah you try, try that shit if you want you gotta start getting y'all's attention the people need to wake up and see that we got the power in our hands we'll shut this shit down and like Cat Williams said I got 12 candles and we've been waiting to burn these that's right, we going on the strike, keep on playing with us and our damn money, playing up in our face, making it seem like we can't afford Grown ass people out here making this little bit of amount of ass money, and y'all think that we gonna keep on falling for that Y'all better fix this
they do think that people are going to keep on falling for this shit. Because it's been working so far. People have been falling for this shit. You know, um, that's the thing. People always make this system about black and white, man. It's about control and people who don't have control. It's about the elite and the non-elite. Like, if you think they just want to control just Hispanic people or black people, you're kidding yourself. You're kidding, you're kidding yourself. They want to control the whole population. The people have been falling for it. They've been falling for it. You know? Um, and, and You know what kills me about a lot of these people? These employee mindsets. None of these people really put together a plan of action of trying to become self-employed, forever trying to come work for themselves. They always, like, if you always going to just settle with working for the man, then this is what working for the man gets you. You know, um, a lot of people just, uh, I just know so many people that just settle working for the man. And they're just dreamers. They just, they'll talk about, like, a dream about, you know, doing something in life, but they never actually go forward with it. They never actually put it to action, put it to plan. They actually, they never really tried to build a business, tried to build a brand, tried, tried to uh, create a product, provide a service, you know, they just talk. That's the thing. The world is full of talkers, a bunch of talkers and shit talkers at, like this lady right here, she just like that's the thing. Okay, um, we'll see if September first, if her going viral on TikTok makes a fucking difference. We'll see if everybody across America strikes because this one person, this one person went viral amongst a thousand other people going viral every fucking day. Or y'all gonna have one sh one hell of a sh show on y'all's hands. Ain't nobody going to work. Boy. No, she's gonna have one shit show on her hands because she's gonna be behind on her rent, behind on her bills, and you know, nobody's gonna you think the, the people that you rent to or that you rent from, they're gonna just, you know, BlackRock and Vanguard and State Street and all these elites that are buying up all the, the rental properties anyways, you think they're just going to feel sorry for you? Okay. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I really, really, really don't like the fact that I have to make this video, but I have to make this video, unfortunately, because our country is extremely divided politically. And it, it seems is. as if every single time there's an attempt to unite us as people, regardless of our race, and before he finishes, I don't know why she even said, she said Republicans, Democrats, and independents. Like, independents hold any fucking weight in this country. They don't even stand a chance of getting fucking elected, man. Like, stop it. Okay, to unite us as people, because we're all experiencing the same thing, uh, essentially the disaster that is the Joe Biden economy. Uh, you have the mainstream liberal media Biden going nominates. out of their way to make sure that we cannot come together, that there is no unity, that we stay divided. And a yep. lot of this division, ironically, is being pushed from the left, being pushed by liberals who are of hating course. on the hit song that is going viral with everybody uh, by Oliver Anthony called Rich Man North of Richmond, which is basically a song about the current class struggle that is going on in the United States uh, in regards to the middle class and the poor, uh, essentially hurting the most due to Joe Biden's economy, namely inflation and high interest rates, which has made it very hard for the average family to provide, to feed themselves, to put food on the table, despite working very, very, very hard. And, it and let me chime in real quick. This is how I know inflation is really, really affecting a lot of the regular working class people. Like, um, I, I do music promotion and marketing for a living, and I have different tiers of customers. Um, 
you got the label customers, which usually bring bigger budgets. You know, they bring like 500 to 1,000 or more. Um, then you have the independent label budgets, which are usually, you know, around 150 to 300. Then you got these working class budgets, like a lot of clients that they could only afford maybe 30 to $50 a month. Well, a lot of those customers that I had, they can't afford those 30 to $50 no more a month. Um, 30 to $50 a month or more. Before inflation, I literally got, um, most, you know, at least a sell or two every single day on my e-commerce store. Soon as inflation hit, it was like the 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 e-commerce sales declined. My you know my label budget stayed the same, my independent label budgets, and then you had some clients that just still they had steady budgets. But a lot of these just clients that only had thirty to fifty bucks a month, that's gone. They don't have that no more because that's going to something else or they just don't have it in general. You know what I'm saying? Cause everything's went up. Like all, everything went up all at once. All the food went up all at once. Gas went up all at once. Rent went up all up at once. Um, energy bills went all up. Everything went up all at once. Even haircuts went up. Haircuts went up, you know, it, every single thing went up across the board. So people that only have 30 or 50 bucks a month, to do music promo, they don't got that no more. At least not until this inflation, you know, gets fixed or it fixes itself or, you know, whatever the solution is. Let's keep it moving. It's clear that this song has united this country across lines that would normally divide us because, again, everybody feels the brunt of the Joe Biden economy. Even across different races, we all can come together and appreciate this song for what it is. I've been selling my soul, working all day, overtime hours for bullshit pay, so I can sit out here and waste my life away, drag back home and drown my troubles away. It's a damn shame what the world's gotten to for people like me. People like you wish I could just wake up and it not be true, but it is. Oh, it is living in the new world with an whole soul. I can rock it. The rich men know the rich men. This is true. Tell them, buddy. Some of us can't say what we absolutely know is true, and he's articulating. I wish politicians look out for miners, and not just miners on an island somewhere. <laughs> Lord, we got folks in the street, ain't got nothing to Ooh, eat, crying. and the whole beast milk and welfare. Is keep on kicking them down. Ah, Lord, it's a damn shame what the world's gotten to for people like me. What for people like you? Yeah. Wish I could just wake up. However, uh, you do have some people who've come out. Yeah, you know what? Before he goes, uh, that looks pretty diverse right there. And that dude that was crying, he was crying because. You feel the emotions when this guy is singing. You feel the struggle. You feel the pain. You feel the poverty. You feel it all. Like, you know, this guy is still showing that you could still make it off of just putting out good, 
um, passionate, emotional music with a message, with a story. If you're actually talking about something, you're not just talking about the same bullshit that everybody else is talking about over and over again here and misinterpreted this song and want to claim that the song is instead about white victimhood of course they did we switched this ginger now mind you this is a white guy ginger beard shave that bruh let me give you a word of advice shave that that's disgusting you have ginger vitus coming from your chin that's gross do not reproduce and that's a different story all right I gotta call it, that's racist. Let's keep it moving. Right. Nevertheless, let's say we switch this guy for a black guy. Now, and this black guy is singing this song. What have I heard since, I, since I've been knee high to a duck my entire life from, a, from the Republican party, from white conservatives? If a black man sang this song talking about, I've been working all day for bull crap pay, what, are they, what, what would they have said? Hmm? I can tell you. Oh, look at you always complaining, all right? Look at you just complain and complain and complain. That's all y'all do is just complain, all right? If you, if you have a problem with the pay, then get another job, all right? It's simple as that. Just get another job. Or you know what? Get a promotion, all right? Stop, start lifting yourself up by the bootstraps and stop being a, a victim, okay? Stop complaining. But no, we don't hear that. And that's what's irritating to me. Because I'm like... This is nothing more than a victimhood mentality song. Yeah, so apparently you have some people who cannot do You know what I have a problem with that? Is you're applying something that's not even music related to music. That's the thing. You're applying something that's not music related to music. And, you know, I hate to say this, man, but, you know, being a self-employed person and being, you know, the highest paid employee everywhere I've worked and knowing that I couldn't get with so much more money out of a job. Yeah, the, the, the solution is for me to go get a better paying job, a higher paying job. See, you know. This is the problem with the employee mindset. You working for the man, you know. You're you're working for the man, and you're expecting the man to pay you like you own the place, you know. Like employees are only gonna make but so much money in the work world. Unless you're working off of jobs that deal with commissions, you're working for some big law firm. For like, you know, most people that work regular nine to fives, you know, it's like you're working in retail businesses. Most people do fast food, retail. Um, if you're working at like a Target, Walmart, retail, the profit margin on retail businesses isn't a lot. It isn't a lot. That's why they have to come up with their own products, the Walmart brand products, the Food Line brand products. Because on those products, the profit margin is 100%. You know, whatever they make, the profit they make, they make 100% profit. But when you're, they're selling everybody else's products, then guess what? They only make a small percentage, a small portion. Like a lot of these businesses in the retail business that are selling other people's products aren't making a lot of money. So they can't pay a lot of people money. It's kind of like when I think about why I always try to figure out why did, how did Dizzle fit with a celebrity cannabis company named Camp Nova? Oh, how do they fit? Well, Camp Nova doesn't have the Camp Nova cannabis products. They're selling celebrity products. So they only make a, a portion of the profit and a small portion of the profit when you're in these retail businesses. Like, you know, most people got jobs and businesses that don't even make a shit ton of money in the first place. You know, like you're working for a restaurant that only makes 
a thousand dollars. They'll be lucky if they make a thousand dollars a day. And they got multiple employees that they're paying, you know, they're paying, they, they could be making a thousand dollars a day and paying out four to five hundred dollars in uh labor for the day. But you want raises, you want raises. There ain't no money for raises because they still gotta. <laughs> They still got to pay the rent. They still got to keep the lights on. Like people, you know, it's easy for employees to say what they should be getting when they don't actually own businesses. They don't actually know the cost that goes into business. You know, I work seven days a week, seven days a week. You, I don't differentiate between crime victimhood based off your race or fake racial oppression that really doesn't exist in the United States anymore. And somebody discussing the state of the economy and what everybody is going through, regardless of race. Okay. I don't. Well, well, that's the problem though. Like speaking truth and facts is considered hateful. It's considered apparently racist, you know? And like I said, though, this guy is trying to apply recording a song to you know an actual life situation i think that is victimhood to uh talk about how yeah inflation has eaten away people's wages to the point where uh if you work even more than 40 hours a week uh you can't provide for your family or feed your kids or buy a house because mortgage rates are too high but again that would take somebody who actually understands the economy who understands something more than just <laughs> the race hustle game right and trying to mislead their followers with this promise of reparations that they're never getting and you know playing video games all day and all this other stuff it, it and somebody also that understands that just because you don't agree with somebody you don't have to hate them just because you don't agree with a few things, two or three things that they might say, you don't have to hate them. You know, that's the thing. Like these liberals literally hate you just because they disagree with you. It would take an actual understanding of the economy and how things work uh, to actually get to that point. So, you yeah, know, maybe yeah. my expectations are a little bit too high, but Hey, with that being said, th there is a, what do you say? Like it takes actual understanding of the economy. Like you run in a business, like that some businesses appoint employees are already getting paid a little too much. And the business isn't making the, the business owner is pretty much damn near getting paid like a fucking employee himself, a black man who actually did make a remix to this song. And, People are not saying that this guy is crime victim or anything like that. Oh, yeah. They're celebrating the remix just like they're celebrating the original. family while we are traveling, trying to get paychecks and work hard. I don't know how much longer I can take this. This only looks like I got half of my paycheck. How can I explain this all to a baby? I know I'll read it, the statement you gave me. Near Mr. Lot, know you've been working daily around the clock. Gotta provide for the family you got. But you laid off, sincerely your boss, I'm sorry. Isn't that sounding outrageous? How about you go home and say that? Go to your daughter and tell her you broke. Cause when your boss will give you some change, you would take it. I am not one to just take it. I am not one to be lazy. Earn what I get, I put days in. I am just one my payment. Lord, it's a damn shame. And it's not just the amazing leftist that has come out here and started hating on this song for essentially no reason. Uh, uh, apparently not really giving a damn about what middle class and poor people are going through or the economy. Maybe because he can't talk about that, right? Maybe he doesn't know too much about that type of stuff. Uh, you also have other leftists as well, too, like uh, Hassan Abi, Chink Yogurt's uh, ne nephew, or Hassan Piker, and um, other people who also take issue with this song and are basically claiming that it's a form of bigotry but like pay attention to the line that the title is named after he's drawing lines there not just class lines as he's framing himself and everybody else listening to and relating to the song as as poor and your average person working class mind you this guy um like lives on 90 acres from what i understand but uh, that's neither here nor there or maybe it is whatever but more specifically he's drawing a geographical line 
here as well uh, between north and south using Richmond. No. Horseshit, bullshit. This guy in the video is drawing a line. You know, <laughs> it's funny to me that people who never made music in their fucking lives have the nerve to tell a motherfucker who wrote a song what their song is about, what what their song means, what they were trying, the message they were trying to get get off on the song. You know, and as a hip hop artist and a musician myself, that says what I feel. This guy is, is such horseshit. Probably never made a song in his fucking life. And you're going to tell a musician what his song means, what message he's trying to convey, what lines he's trying to draw. No, th you're trying to draw these lines because you're trying to paint these narratives to fit, you know, your narrative. Virginia as that dividing line. With that, you can't ignore... Uh, maybe because he lives in Virginia, duh. The elephant in the room, you know, he's he's like bringing up old, bitter, north, south ideological disconnections. Of the Horseshit, bullshit. He's bringing up old, bitter, north and south ideologies. D this is such horseshit. Go back to the Civil War era. Drawing this north-south line and claiming that uh, you know it's it's those people from the north that want to control us and tell us what to do there's a lot of really bad you know what man these people are so fucking ignorant man there's they know nothing man like go watch century yourself like anybody who knows their history Look up Century Itself. It's about Sigmund Freud, um, Edward Bernays, which is Sigmund Freud's nephew. Everything that Oliver Anthony talks about in that song, they pretty much cover in Century of Self. These people are so fucking delusional. Yes, of course, these rich men north of Richmond want to fucking control, control us. Of course they do. Of course, they want to keep us under thumb. They want to know everything you fucking think. Yes, they want to psychoanalysis. Yes. Yes, they want to psychoanalysis. Yes. Like, don't let these glasses fool you, man. Don't let these glasses fool you. This dude is dumber than a fucking bag of bricks. Bad and toxic and uh, often bigoted political baggage uh, that comes with, you know, that that North v. South binary. <laughs> and also on top of it, it literally has nothing to do with the economic struggles uh, that he's singing about in the first portion of the song. Rich men north of Richmond are not the sole reason that you're struggling economically. It's the exploitative and solely profit-driven market system we currently live under, uh, which is hurting everyone all over the country, uh, regardless of what side of the Mason Dixon line you land. Which is basically ran by the rich men north of Richmond. It's that dumb this guy is. The rich men north of Richmond definitely have uh, their pockets are being filled by the 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 same people, very people he's talking about. Land up. Please don't shit on this man. Look at the other verse. I wish politicians would look out for minors and not just minors on an island somewhere. Lord, we got folks on the street, ain't got nothing to eat, and the obese milking welfare. Well, God, if you're five foot three and you're 300 pounds, taxes ought not to pay for your bags of fudge rounds. Young men are putting themselves six feet in the ground because all this damn country does is keep on kicking him down. <laughs> hey man, please don't shit on this guy. He's got some good ideas. <laughs> it's against welfare queens despite farmers being the most subsidized American industry. I mean, he's not even a farmer. He very much, most likely, if he lives in Appalachia, which he seems to be uh, living in uh, Appalachia, he probably does not have a job. Like many people in that region don't have a job because they used to work in uh, yeah, which basically contradicts everything this guy's fucking nephew just said about, oh, he's apparently rich because he lives on 60 acres now. See, 
these dudes are clowns. One contradicts the other. In coal mines and no longer can work in coal mines because uh, of automation or because, sorry, woke liberalism has eviscerated the coal mining industry. Living in Alabama right now and everyone here has a boner for this song. Let me pick up my banjo and cry because motherfuckers out here getting snapped. Yeah, bro, if you're that poor, okay, if you're a poor guy living in uh, this region, how in the ever loving f are you shitting on other poor guys? You're literally like, oh man, I hate the rich people defending pedophiles. Fine, on board with that message. That's good. And then immediately he's like, you know who's real bad? A different kind of poor guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, a uh, lazy poor person. Yeah. Yeah, lazy poor people, you know, because. Being poor is really a mindset. <laughs> it's a mindset. This idea of rich and poor. Um, money has only the monetary value that we say it has. You know. <laughs> yeah, like. If you're a hardworking poor person. Yeah, I'm a shit on the lazy poor person. Because. We're not even in the same boat. You're poor by choice. I'm poor because I can't get over. I can't get, you know, I can't get over the hump. Work hard all day, every day, and still not making enough. But yeah, like, you know, a lazy poor person and a hardworking poor person. It's apples and oranges. Yeah. You know, but that's how much common sense and common knowledge this guy has. Like, we're supposed to compare lazy people to hardworking people whether they're po both poor or not no no get the fuck out of here with that shit i hate how poor i am and how the rich have fucked me over but you know what i hate more than that a different kind of poor guy poor guy down the street yeah so yeah yeah a lazy fucking poor person if you're a hard working poor person yeah you could you could just like lazy poor people everybody on the planet can dislike lazy poor people as far as i'm concerned everybody on the planet can dislike lazy people as far as i'm concerned i don't care what race color creed if you're lazy i don't like lazy people <laughs> i work seven days a fucking week what the fuck do i like a lazy person for i don't care if, if they're rich if they're lazy i don't like them again Leave it to liberals and leftists to take a song that has united people across class and political and racial lines. Think and, and, and paint their own narrative to the song and their own meaning, which, you know, screw with the musician, what the musician's message and meaning is when he wrote the song. Oh, uh, you just got to make your own interpretation and your own meaning up for it. You know, that's the problem. These everybody just takes anything you say nowadays and just reinterprets, puts their own interpretation, their own twist, their own spin to it. You know, he wasn't saying this. He was really saying this. How the fuck do you know? You didn't write the fucking song. These non-musicians trying to tell a musician what his message was, what he meant, what he felt in his song, man. Shut the fuck up. That's what I that's what I say to non-musicians trying to tell a musician what his song means. Shut the fuck up. That so typically divide us and try to divide us even further, right? To try to hate on the song, to try to basically hate on the guy who's singing the song. It's a song that I think does bring people together because I think Yeah, because they did wait till it went number one till they started screaming bigotry um and racism for Oliver Anthony Richmond or the Richmond. They, you know, they waited till the song went number one. That's what they do though. When when something that they disagree with goes number one, oh, they gotta attack it. Everybody is to a certain extent, again, we're feeling the brunt of the Biden economy, right? You know, all that 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 money that you know leftists like you know Hassan Piker uh vouch for the government to spend, right, to put into the economy and to shut down the economy at the same time. Yeah, that helped cause this inflation, okay? Real wage growth has declined ever since Biden has took office. People are objectively poor 
since they took office. But again, you know, I, I, I don't really expect leftists, you know, like Hassan Piker or the amazing leftists to be able to talk about this stuff. Because again, the only thing they know, specifically the amazing leftists, the only thing he knows is the race hustle, right? So again, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it isn't either here nor there. So without further ado, uh, despite the hate from the left, uh, Oliver Anthony's viral anthem, Richmond, North of Richmond, skyrockets to number one in the world on Apple Music. So that is basically the number one song in the world. Let's read here. The new viral song from Virginia factory worker and up-and-coming country singer Anthony Oliver has climbed to number one on Apple Music's global charts. Richmond, North of Richmond, which was released earlier this month, is sitting alongside top names in the industry, including Taylor Swift, Doja Cat, and fellow country singer Morgan Wallen. The song has also taken the top spot in the U.S. In only five days, the song has surpassed nearly 8 million listens on Spotify and is predicted to likely be uh, a number one hit on uh the billboard hot 100 chart by the end of the month in the video for the song anthony sings into a mic while playing guitar in the woods with his dog by his side the song got over 2 million views in the first two days it was released and had over 1 million views on youtube legendary country singer john rich has offered to help <laughs> anthony produce a record rich man north of richmond highlights the struggles of the working class in america and begins Quote, I've been selling my soul, working all uh, day, overtime hours for BS pay, so I can't sit out here and waste my life away, drag back home, and drown my troubles away. Again, you know, this guy is not talking about how he should be able to sit home and work and get paid, which is what a lot of leftists talk about. He's like, look, I'm working, right? I'm a factory worker. I'm working overtime, and... I'm not getting paid enough to survive in this economy. Again, which is what a lot of people are feeling, okay? According to Moody's Analytics, the average household is paying $700 more per month than they were two years ago. $700 more per month. Again, that's insane. That's absolutely insane. Yeah, and everybody's rent is going up every single year now. Like, when I first started renting apartments my rent wasn't going up every single year not every single year and if it did it would be like little small jumps now it's like a hundred dollars every single year you know like you know these people hating on this song going number one i mean first of all you got to analyze the music game right now there's a lot of trash out there Nobody's singing with this emotion. It's a passion. Everybody's not willing to um, talk about controversial topics like this. And I can tell you what, his hard work paid off now. Song went number one. The other song is doing pretty well. I don't think his other song is as good as Richmond, North of Richmond. But every song that I've heard, you can hear the passion, the emotions. It's his music. You know, you could see that he's putting a lot into his music you know and that's a lot more than i can say for most musicians nowadays you know so that's the thing i we knew we should have known that once it hit number one that the liberal haters are gonna come out because they're labeling it as a conservative song um you heard the first guy you know I know they say black people can't be racist, but if you're telling a white man, you know, shave your ginger beard, don't procreate because it's disgusting and nasty. It just sounds like you hate Irish and Scottish people to me, you know. Um, yeah, congratulations to Oliver Anthony. Very humble cat, too. Passed up big deals. His first show was in North Carolina, said that he would literally stay. The show was from like 1.30 to 2.30 p.m., said he'll stay to 2 and a.m. if need be, if, you know, you're coming to listen to his music. And as a music promoter, Oliver Anthony, you know, he's the kind of musicians I like to see. He He's still proving to me that you could still make it off of the music alone 
He just put out good music, put um, a lot of emotions, energy, passion into your music, put out the good music, um, still be humble, and you're good to go. You know, like the cat literally had no marketing plan, no marketing strategy. I think he had just one platform that posted the video, went viral from there. And you see the diversity of people watching the video and loving the song. And because I think a lot of people can relate to this song. And if you go watch The Century of Self, you'll understand it's not about black and white. It's 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 about just total control, like Oliver Anthony says in that song. It's about controlling all of us. Every last one of us. So yeah, fuck the Richmond, North of Richmond. Um, once again, I want to thank y'all for tuning in, Paul Pickett Podcast, and I'm out.